That could all change. What I do know is, is that we have a funding formula that puts security personnel in our schools at the same ratio per building, not based on the number of students in a school. Creating an armed fortress in our schools is not the way. What is the solution? I think that as, a, as citizens, I think we have to figure out a way to have more reasonable protections, more reasonable, I think, gun safety protections, uh, certainly in the resolution that we will be considering tonight. We are calling on Congress and state legislatures to come together. Fairfax County School Board Chairman Janie Strauss and board member Elizabeth Schultz are at odds on how to provide safety for the district's nearly 200,000 students, plus teachers and employees. Fox 5 has learned Schultz will propose the district conduct a comprehensive review and assessment of security in schools. If there is a threat incoming, you have to have an opposing force. We've also heard from our teachers, they don't want to be armed. We don't need a Wild West situation where we have multiple guns. Emerging technology aimed at detecting an active shooter on campus is also a topic board members will dive into at Thursday night's meeting. We're going to be guarded by armed personnel. So why is it that the board, as public servants, as elected officials, is due any more security than the children and the employees going into our buildings every day? Right now here at Luther Jackson Middle School, you can see that there is a priest speaking. He did begin with prayer and then read the names of each victim who lost their lives in the Florida shooting and also shared a message of healing and how the community across the country can move forward. Now also tonight, there was a closed door session for board members and at seven o'clock, they will have their regularly scheduled public meeting open to the public and also parents and students where they will discuss how to move forward concerning protecting students. Tisha Lewis, Fox 5 Local News. Take a look. Dramatic video shows emergency crews rescuing a driver who got stuck in a sinking car in the Arkansas River. Imagine being in that car. The person hit a slick spot on the road, lost control, ended up there. The driver is now recovering and is expected to be okay. That had to be awfully scary. Oh it's terrifying. Flash flooding, yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of that, that out there. Yes, yes. Yeah. There's been so much severe weather across the central part of the country. Mm -hmm. We're getting some of that wet weather right now, but uh, nothing too severe here. So okay. All right. we're just uh, back to the gloomy pattern, I suppose. Uh, this is how we started the week on Monday, and it's how we'll end it as we take a live look outside right now. I was kind of getting used to those 80s, though, I have to say. <laughs> felt nice to be outside again. Uh, we'll wait another month or two for that, I suppose. Uh, spring, it's less than a month away, by the way. March 20th is when it officially begins. But those 80s, uh, usually you got to wait until May for those. All right, uh, back to your headlines for this evening and even into tomorrow and even into the weekend. Clouds and showers, they continue. I'm afraid it's going to be another gray weekend. Uh, our fourth one in a row with precipitation. Uh, this time, though, no snow, just rain. Outside right now, very chilly compared to the past two afternoons, 48 in Washington, 45 in Baltimore, 46 in Annapolis, 43 in Frederick, 41 in Martinsburg. No dinner outside, I'm afraid, between uh, the rain showers and that uh, maybe 30 degree temperature drop compared to this time yesterday. We knew it would be dramatic. And yes, it's 32 degrees colder in Baltimore, 33 in Gaithersburg. Earlier today, I was seeing minus 40s. So uh, a shock to the system, but back to some February-like weather. So we just had a pretty gusty line of rain showers pushed through the D.C. metro. They were stronger approaching the Beltway. They've kind of weakened as they've moved into southern sections of Maryland, northern parts of Virginia. But right now, the steadiest rain, and this is a really skinny band, stretches from southern Prince George's County, just north of Waldorf. You'll be seeing it soon if you're not already. And then uh, across the Potomac into sections of uh, northern Virginia, King George County, Stafford County, and um, right along 95 there, seeing a little bit of rain. But that's a very narrow band of showers since it's passed. We'll be back to just some drizzle around this evening. Temperatures are mainly in the 40s. We're not going to fall too hard tonight. Just a lot of cloud cover and uh, fog, too. We've got a lot of that low-lying fog. So. Overnight low temperatures, well above freezing for us and even our northwestern suburbs. It looks like we only get into the upper 30s, Hagerstown down through Martinsburg. There is a concern for some freezing rain and some icing once you get into the mountains, but that's way outside our area. So thankful we don't have to deal with that as you start off your Friday morning. Here's what Friday looks like. High pressure offshore, so we've still got that cool flow around it, meaning uh, out of the northeast, you're not going to get too warm. Stalled front towards our south, so that is a couple of good ingredients for a gray day, I'll tell you, with the fog the clouds and just keeping showers.
showers in the forecast at any time. The heavier rain off towards our north and west, but just enough to be a nuisance, that drizzle, where it's like not heavy enough for an umbrella or to use the windshield wipers, but uh, you need at least a hood on the jacket, I guess, if you're walking around. Fox Futurecast shows after these showers pass towards our south and east, uh, they will return by tomorrow morning. So count on some of that drizzle, light rain for your drive in, and then maybe a break later on in the day, but uh, anything will just be replaced by some drizzle. Our one like dry period at, before we head into the weekend is going to be Friday night. I don't see much chance of falling rain, and maybe even the skies lift a little bit off towards our west especially, but those showers fill right back in by Saturday morning. So any activities you have planned, count on the rain uh, both Saturday, but then really especially on Sunday. That uh, looks to be the wet one of the weekend. So your two-day forecast, spotty showers, 52 degrees for tomorrow, and then uh, temperatures do jump over the weekend, 60 degrees there on Saturday. And look at Sunday, AccuWeather seven-day forecast. Unfortunately, that's a lot of cloud cover, but fortunately, it is just rain, and it will be a very mild rain, 70 degrees there on Sunday. Uh, looks like we have a chance of a shower on Monday. That Monday could go either two ways. One model wants to clear us out real fast, and another wants to keep the clouds and showers around. My guess is the way the pattern's been, those clouds and showers will stick around before we do finally clear out for a bit Tuesday and Wednesday and then those rain showers return next Wednesday but nothing too cold even though we're back to February all these temperatures are still above average. Sarah and Sean back over to you. Well if you want to avoid catching the flu this season there is apparently one simple thing you can do to prevent spreading germs. Medical experts say you should stop shaking hands. Instead, they suggest giving your friends and colleagues a fist bump. I've, I've actually heard mm -hmm. this before. Uh, while it's still hand-to-hand -hand contact, doctors say you're only passing about 10% of the bacteria. If you can't avoid shaking hands, they say you should immediately wash your hands or try to find some hand sanitizer. You know what I like to do? What's that? The elbow bump. Yeah, that works too. You don't have to touch hands at all. I know, because then you feel bad.